Hello, good evening viewers. So today in the next edition of Fellowship Vartha, we have got Dr. Amit Kurana, a postdoctoral fellow at University uh, in San Diego. And uh, he's a pharmacology fellow. He started his career with uh, Delhi University, Dipsar, then uh, went to Naipur, and uh, he has been uh, in a couple of international laboratories. So Amit, uh, I'll request you to please tell us about your academic journey and uh, what motivated you to move from one place to another and uh, what the research environment or academic environment you find in those places. First of all, a very good morning, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity to host me and share my experiences. I am a graduate in pharmacy, as you already shared. Then I did my specialization in master's in pharmacology and toxicology at Naipur Mohali. Then my PhD in pharmacology and toxicology from Naipur Hyderabad. Then from my school days, I wanted to be a scientist. And then my original motivation was to find some meaningful treatment therapeutics for patients with unmet medical needs. And in that conquest, I was looking forward to different opportunities, which I applied to during my PhD, and then later for my postdoctoral fellowships as well. Thank you, Amit. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of Indian students, especially those who have completed their PhD or are about to complete their PhD, are looking for various postdoctoral opportunities. And Dr. Amit Purana has been an awardee of German fellowship called Prime, which is a postdoctoral level. So, uh, Amit, I would like to know, uh, I would like you to share more information about this Prime fellowship, uh, which is offered uh, by Germany to our viewers. What is this fellowship? How it is different from others? And how did you prepare yourself for this? particular fellowship. Thank you very much for asking this question, sir. The Prime Fellowship, it stands for Postdoctoral Researchers International Mobility Experience funded by the DAAD, which is, happens to be the world's number one student exchange funding organization. During my PhD, I actually had one DST DARD fellowship through which I already came to Germany. I had already made a contact at RWTS University Hospital in Aachen with my professor who hosted me during my PhD. So I had come already in 2019. When I came to visit, I explored with him different other opportunities for the future. And he kindly agreed to provide his support. Then I looked at the Prime Fellowship, which was actually very interesting, it was for the duration of one and a half year, so total 18 months. And DARD was funding you one full year in any country throughout the world, in any specific lab that you would like to join in. Then I was looking forward to people who were working in my area of expertise. So I was looking into something translational pharmacology, I worked on nanomedicine at the same time, inflammation and fibrosis. So I already knew a German supervisor. Then my next goal was to find out a foreign host. I looked around and then I found one host at the University of Twente in Netherlands. I approached independently, then shared about my idea. Then I had to also share that both the supervisors should be working in alignment because the expertise should be complementary, so that I had to ensure. Then I connected them as well, then spoke with them. We designed mutually convenient as well as project that could be done in the labs. And then I applied to it. The criteria to apply was very stringent. And now they even say that your PhD thesis has to be outstanding to even apply. So I was fortunate enough to be selected for it. The success rate is around 10 to 
and the fellowship that you get it's actually higher than the normal fellowship so you get dual affiliation the german government uh, through the dard they make a contract with your german university you get employed there the idea is that you become an employee so that you get all the social benefits of germany otherwise in traditional fellowship what happens you get fellowship directly from funding organization but you do not get any social security whereas here dart pays the money to the university you become a university employee so now you become a german taxpayer and that's why everything is covered and then working in other country gives you higher salary in the form of expatriate allowance so that was very interesting and the research infrastructure that i could use in germany as well as in netherlands it was you know a new experience i could explore certain new techniques new avenues for taking the project to the next level yeah viewers as amit has mentioned there are number of uh, postdoctoral fellowships available for doing your work in germany and also in other part of europe you need to compete for each one of them and most many of them are very very uh, competitive as he said the 10% 10 to 15% sometimes 20% it may go but then you need to prepare very hard and obviously selection of supervisor selection of mentor or selection of a host scientist is very very crucial because not only the fellow should be willing to host you but also should have good credentials as a leading researcher because that takes the uh, uh, application in a much more positive way and what a special thing he told about this uh, prime fellowship that there are two distinct advantages one you are treated like a german employee so unlike other fellowship where you are only a fellowship holder here you are being considered as employee and second you get a affiliation to one more laboratory anywhere in the world so this is something very interesting and this is only this particular fellowship can offer so what was your working uh, experience in germany and how different did you find it from india it was very new experience for me so german culture they say it's very direct so here whatever are the expectations they are very clear i like that the facility and infrastructure of course in certain areas i felt there was you know i could explore certain new techniques i could have access to photon microscopy get to know about higher level of genomic tools plus in my dutch laboratory i also got to know about certain new techniques in the area of circulating cells which could be explored in the direction of cancer fibrosis and many other so that was very nice dutch culture also is very uh, family oriented so in both the cultures you get to know that there are already boundaries for your work plus your life personal life so the people give very much importance over that aspect at the same time the quality of work that you get to do it's unbeatable so it was very nice and other thing that i liked was that in certain areas to get things was faster ordering chemicals so the bureaucracy was little bit lower so you get the chemicals and reagents little earlier the collaborative environment i really enjoyed it i could meet many international friends make them colleague and now some of them are my collaborators so that also is something very interesting that you get to know international people and make long term connections now amit you are working in san diego as a postdoctoral fellow how did you land up there did you apply it from germany or netherland or did you came back to india and then applied and uh, i understand it's a, a position in a project so how did you compete for that it was actually very interesting so all the line throughout my phd so i was specializing in the area of inflammation and fibrosis to that end so i had a vision that i want to specialize in this core area that's why while i was in germany and the netherlands 
I tried to focus in the same area. During my PhD, I worked on pancreatitis. During my first fellowship, I worked in the area of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Changed organ, but mechanistically, my approach as a pharmacologist was to apply my training plus get to know new skills. Then I was further looking to even subspecialize. So now I am working again in the area of liver diseases, right now in the area of alcoholic liver disease. But because I was interested with gut microbiome, so here I'm getting to know the intricacies because this is one of the pioneer labs that I have joined here. And so focusing further in this area before I embark on my pathway as an independent research scientist or a principal investigator, wherever God leads later. <laughs> Amit, if I could ask you, what are the best practices uh, you have learned in Germany, Netherlands, or in the United States, which you would like to carry back home, and you would like Indian organization to grow in that way? That's a very important question. So one of the important things that I liked, particularly in the Dutch and the German culture, that it's so much important to be, you know, focused on a specific line of research. So if we have a vision, for example, that I want to contribute to this area of research, it's very important that I make a vision, a line of research that for the next five years, I want to dedicate this. And this would be my strategy to approach. This would be the people I would be collaborating with so that the project can be met with. Other thing is having a network of people collaborating. So global collaboration, bringing that flavor into Indian setting would absolutely help our infrastructure as well as the system that we are creating. Already, I'm actually very happy that the number of IITs that we have, the ICERs, the NIPERS, actually we have a very good system set up in India, provided if we, you know, the next next generation takes forward in the direction of collaboration. Other part that I also liked was the level of accountability, because the research that is done here is with high level of integrity. You know, people are really forward to contributing societally. Being in public education system, it's very important that the money that the people are bestowing upon us as scientists that is being used and being channeled to the best possible way to get to find new solutions for unmet medical needs. So taking that level of accountability and integrity also would be one of my high priority. Other thing that I learned was the high emphasis given to individual growth of students. So the mentorship is actually unique here. The professors are actually trained how to really mentor because goal of training a PhD and postdoctoral fellow is not to just publish new paper or do research investigation, but to create new critical thinkers who can apply their skills into diverse array of problems that are there. You know, sometimes as students, we feel that already a lot of work has been done. What can I do? But then if we look around with that approach to find solutions, there are still a lot of problems. And then it's important to apply. We always look for gap areas to establish novelty. Yes. That is Absolutely. very critical because that is where people... Uh, Amit, uh, we are running short of time, but uh, as a last question, uh, what would be your advice to the future aspirant for postdoctoral fellowship abroad from India? First would be, be clear that this is my plan for the next five to 10 years, that this is what I want to really achieve be it in academia, or you want to have your own startup, or you want to join some company. It's very important to be clear in your thoughts. Second would be plan ahead. Be prepared well. Many of the opportunities are opportunities only when you are prepared. If we don't make the right preparations, the opportunities might still go away. Third, I would say make connections. Good, deep, 
relational connections whenever you go to a conference, whenever you are in a symposium, through your supervisor, through your alumni, make connections, get in touch, and explore. Fourth would be have a vision for your research line. It's important to be contributing in a line of research because focus is one of the primary thing as a research that we researcher that we need. And then if you put your efforts are clear in your thoughts, by God's grace, eventually things would align, you would find the right collaborations. And then as you embark on your own journey to be an investigator, mentor people, you know, I believe in lifting others up. So when you are going ahead, take take others with you. Uh, I would rather say that, you know, refuse to go at the top alone. Take people along with you so that you can share and cherish those moments and, you know, enjoy each other's success. That would be my Wonderful perspective. statement, uh, Amit. So friends, uh, what Amit has said, that don't wait for an opportunity. It is better to be prepared first by ourselves and then look for opportunities. So you should have a very clear research plan. You should have identified who could be a potential host. And then depending upon the available opportunities, you have to just crack those opportunities. We wish you all good luck. And uh, thank you, Amit, for joining us uh, this evening and uh, looking forward. Thank you very much, sir, for the kind opportunities.